Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focus Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very important and interesting topic, myopathy. Myopathy or the muscle disorders and the core concepts. The most important concepts and points of myopathy shall be discussed. Myopathy. Myopathy or muscle disease. What are the characteristics of the myopathy or muscle disorders? The few characteristics of myopathy are it involves the proximal muscles. So when it involves the proximal muscles of the lower limb, they have difficulty in getting up from squatting position. They have difficulty in climbing up the stairs. In Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, they climb on themselves, known as Gower's sign. If the quadriceps is involved, they have buckling of the knees. They cannot extend the knee. So if all these are present, they are suggestive of proximal muscle involvement. Second, it is symmetrical. When the right side a group of muscles are affected. The same group of muscles are affected on the left side too. So it is symmetrical. The reflexes are normal. Unlike neuropathy, which may sometimes appear to be similar, in myopathy the reflexes are normal, whereas in neuropathy the reflexes are lost. And another important differentiating point of myopathy from neuropathy is that the sensations are normal. And then there is fatigability of the muscles. The history of fatigability is there. When they, there is an inability to maintain and sustain a force. So the most five important characteristics of myopathy are 1. The proximal muscle involvement 2. Symmetric involvement 3. The reflexes are normal 4. The sensations are normal 5. There is fatigue the other characteristics are that there could be muscle pain or myalgia especially in infective and inflammatory myopathies there can be there can be muscle contractors especially in metabolic or or glycolytic pathway disorders where there is inability to break after an active muscle contracture associated with energy failure there could be myotonia where there is prolonged muscle contraction followed by slow relaxation of muscle groups especially the grip when they try to hold on to their grip and tongue when we do percussion myotonia so there will be a prolonged contraction followed by a prolonged relaxation slow relaxation and then muscle disorders can be suspected if there is a rise in creatine kinase levels when we do the enzyme levels, the preferred enzyme test we do is the CPK and of course we can confirm it with nerve conduction studies and EMG. EMG shows myopathic pattern unlike a, a neurological disorder, with, uh, neuropathy where it shows a neuropathic disorders. So these are the characteristics of myopathy. The proximal muscle involvement, the symmetric involvement, the reflexes being normal, the sensations being normal. There could be fatigability, the muscle pain could be there in especially inflammatory myopathies, muscle contractors in metabolic myopathies, myotonia, the preferred investigation is CPK and the preferred test is the is the EMG. Right. These are the basic and most important characteristics of myopathy. But how do we approach a person having muscle weakness? The approach would be the two broad cat categories. One intermittent weakness second the persistent weakness some muscle disorders have intermittent weakness some muscle disorders have persistent weakness the disorders which have intermittent weakness are the glycolytic or metabolic pathways the cnt pathway involvement the channelopathies especially the hypokalemic periodic paralysis the myasthenia gravis and the lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome they all have intermittent weakness. The persistent weakness and the selective muscle group involvement. If we see the pattern of muscle involvement itself, we get a lot of clues regarding the type of myopathy. 
For example, if there is a persistent weakness and then you look out for the following muscle group involvement. If proximal muscle groups are involved more than the distal muscle groups, it could be Duchenne's muscular dystrophy or any dystrophy neuropathies. But in few conditions, exceptions where the distal muscles are involved, it could be myotonic dystrophy. If the person has got ptosis, the eyelids being involved, it could be myasthenia gravis or myasthenia gravis. If there is selective involvement of quadriparesis, the proximal muscles, but in upper limbs flexors, the finger flexors are involved, it is highly suggestive of inclusion body myositis. And if a person is not able to extend the head and there is a dropped head, then we have to think of ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or myasthenia gravis or polymyositis. So when, how do we approach a person having muscle disease? One, an intermittent weakness or a persistent weakness. Intermittent weakness, there are few muscle disorders. Persistent weakness, then we look for the muscle groups involved. For example, as I said, quadriceps and finger flexors, if they are involved, they are highly suggestive of inclusion body myositis. Right. Having understood the basic concepts, how do we approach a person having myopathy? Myopathies are generally three types. They are put in three broad categories. One, the inflammatory myopathy, namely the dermatocytes, polymyositis and inclusion body myositis. Second, the dystrophinopathies usually because of genetic causes like DMD, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Third, the myopathy is due to other causes. It could be toxic, systemic or other iatrogenic causes. So we have inflammatory myopathy group. We have the dystrophinopathies group. We have myopathies due to other causes. Now we'll go systematically and analyze each group of muscle disorders. First, the inflammatory myopathies. We basically have again the two broad categories. One, the Dermatomyositis, polymyositis on one side and inclusion body myositis on the other side. What are the characteristic features of the dermatomyositis or polymyositis? As for any myopathy, the proximal muscles are involved more than the distal muscles. There is a subacute onset. Since it's an inflammatory condition, there will be pain. Dysphagia can occur, but the respiratory muscle involvement is rare. There are some characteristic features in dermatomyositis. Characteristic features of dermatomyositis are that there is an increased risk of cancers, especially ovarian cancer. They can have a heliotropic, heliotropic rash on the cheeks. They can have eyelid edema, periorbital edema. And they can have skin lesions over the knuckles, extensor surfaces, known as Gottron's papule. And the muscle biopsy of dermatomyositis characteristically shows perifascicular atrophy. The investigation for both polymyositis and dermatomyositis includes the rise in CPK, creatine phosphokinase, and the treatment is of course steroids. When we come to inclusion body myositis, there is not much treatment as compared to polymyositis or dermatomyositis. It is usually seen in older people, usually more than 50 years old. They can also have dysphagia. They have the characteristic muscle involvement. As I said earlier, the quadriceps in the lower limbs, the finger flexors of the upper limbs are involved. So if you find weakness specifically in the finger flexors of the upper limb and quadriceps of the lower limb, it is highly suggestive of inclusion body myositis. So this is about inflammatory myopathy. The next category is the dystrophinopathies. In children, what is common is Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. In adults, we see the limb girdle muscular dystrophies. The Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Here, the main defect in Duchenne's muscular dystrophy is that there is no dystrophin. Dystrophin is the substance, is the protein which gives support and stability to the cell membrane. And therefore, when the dystrophin is absent, the muscle becomes very weak. It's an X-linked recessive disorder. And therefore, it is seen only in boys. Girls only carry the disease. Because in girls, there are two X. One X can compensate for the other. But boys have only one X and Y. And therefore, if that X gets affected, they develop disease. So the disease is manifest in boys. 
death usually occurs in teenage or an, in early 20s and then the treatment is steroids the specific clinical features of Duchenne's muscular dystrophy are that there could be weakness of the paravertebral muscles so it can result in kyphoscoliosis there can be lumbar lordosis and there is cough hypertrophy very important point they have cough hypertrophy because of cough hypertrophy they plantar flex the foot and in fact when they climb when they ask to stand up from squatting position they plantar flex the foot because of the cough hypertrophy and put the two upper limbs in front and then they climb on themselves this is very characteristic known as Gower's sign which we see in Duchenne's muscular dystrophy so death occurs by respiratory failure and it is because of the abnormality in the chromosome 21 right another dystrophy muscular dystrophy which we commonly see especially in adults is myotonic dystrophy here there is an exception usually myopathy is affect the proximal muscles but in myotonic dystrophy the distal muscles are more affected than proximal muscles it is the most common muscular dystrophy of the adults as we say DND is common in children in adults the most common muscular dystrophy of adults is myotonic dystrophy they have a very characteristic facial weakness there is temporal weakness temporal atrophy they can have torsus they can have cat rat they can have a weak smile and they can have frontal baldness these are all the characteristic facial appearance of persons having myotonic dystrophy and of course myotonia is a strong contraction followed by a very slow relaxation so when we ask them to hold they keep on holding they don't relax it easily so grip we can test it we can test it on the eye closure and we can do percussion myotonia on the tongue and the TNR eminence one of the important points for myotonic dystrophy is that according uh, uh, according to genetics it is a trinucleotide repeat disorder we generally have three neurological disorders which are because of trinucleotide repeat disorders one is this muscular myotonic dystrophy second is the Frederick's ataxia and the third is the Huntington's chorea these three are common neurological disorders which have in common the trinucleotide repeat disorder abnormality right this is about the this is about the inflammatory myopathy and dystrophinopathies now let's go to the third category myopathy due to other causes myopathy due to other causes because can be because of iatrogenic doctor induced because of medications the common medications which cause myopathy are steroids azathioprine and then statins in fact statin myopathy is very very common metabolic metabolic myopathies they occur because of exertion and it is intermittent basically we can diagnose the metabolic myopathy because of its intermittent nature because of exertion and most important is that they have myoglobinuria myoglobin is a muscle protein muscle protein which which does not bind muscle hemo muscle which does not bind to protein and it gets excreted in the urine it gives a cola colored urine and by looking at the myoglobin the presence of myoglobin in the urine we can diagnose myoglobinuria and with history of exertion and intermittent weakness it is more of a metabolic myopathy very important muscle disorder which comes under the category due to other causes is channelopathies channelopathies especially the hypokalemic periodic paralysis which is because of the sodium channel disorder the triggering factor is carbohydrate meals a high carbohydrate meals persons take a good heart, good amount of carbohydrate they sleep well only to realize when they get up that they are weak in all four limbs so they will be really surprised to have developed weakness of all four limbs of such, such a sudden onset in nature how do we confirm it we test it the electrolyte level the potassium will be low so the potassium will be low and therefore we have to treat with the 
potassium supplements either oral potassium or IV potassium if the potassium level is very low one important clinical point when we give IV potassium is that the potassium has to be given in mannitol not in dextrose solutions because when we give dextrose the insulin will release further and it will put the potassium back into the cells further aggravating hypokalemia so when we treat hypokalemia by giving IV potassium we have to put potassium in mannitol and not in dextrose solution very important point then we can have critical illness myopathy which we see in persons admitted in critical care centers due to due to, due to cardiopulmonary events and may be difficult to wean off from the ventilator so if the person has weakness in a critical care setup we have to think of critical care myopathy then other systematic other systemic causes also can cause myopathy the metabolic like diabetic can cause myopathy the endocrine abnormalities like hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism or Addison's disease or Cushing's disease or hyperparathyroidism the deficiency diseases deficiency also can cause myopathy like vitamin B12 deficiency vitamin D deficiency this can be picked up by increased in in the knee jerk reflex and a pain when we squeeze on the pelvic bones and musculature so we suspect vitamin D deficiency and if we treat with vitamin D they become better toxic alcohol also can cause myopathy polymyalgia rheumatica they complain with diffuse body pains muscle pains usually they have early morning stiffness pain in the shoulders pain in the back pain in the limbs early morning stiffness seen in old people we confirm it by a raised ESR but the most dramatic point in the polymyalgia rheumatica is their excellent response to steroids even when we start on a small dose of steroids they show excellent recovery in just a couple of days so these are all the disorders we have to think in myopathy due to other causes so the characteristic of myopathy is that it affects the proximal muscles it is symmetric the reflexes are normal the sensations are normal and there is fatigability the three broad groups of muscle disorders are inflammatory myopathy dystrophinopathies myopathy is due to systemic causes we need to concentrate on inflammatory myopathies because we can give steroids and treat it and we need to consider dystrophies muscle muscle being affected due to other systemic causes like side effects or endocrine because they are all treatable so we should we should be very vigilant about the treatable cause of myopathy because they are treatable and when we give proper and correct treatment they become better so this is a broad overview of myopathies and especially I focused on the core concepts of myopathy. The core and most important concepts of myopathy. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture. If you have any suggestions or comments, kindly post on to my YouTube channel. But please like and subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Sinos Medical Concepts and my FB page, Dr. Sinos Concepts. Thank you. Bye.